Friday. I'm cranky. Sarah, we have so much to talk about. We've been like, we needed a catch up, man. We might we actually did. have to talk. We might have to talk to each other off of a podcast. No, no that's not <laughs> the way our relationship works. We only speak to each other in public. Hello, everyone. This is JVL here with my best friend, Sarah Longwell, publisher of The Bulwark. New polls from CNN out of Pennsylvania and Michigan this morning. Tell me, tell me are- about them. I haven't seen them. So they broke this on CNN while I was on, and uh, you know they they have their polling guy. Um, and Pennsylvania head to head, Trump and Biden. This is sort of good news for Biden because he's been polling a little bit behind Trump in Pennsylvania, but it's precisely tied, precisely tied. Although it's like everything gets a little worse for Biden when you throw in the third parties uh, and RFK. Uh, in Michigan, though, Trump is up by eight points, and. This is Michigan has been uh, a bit wild in the polling this cycle. And you'll remember, in terms of 2020, Mm -hmm. Michigan was Joe Biden's most comfortable win in the swing states. Yes. Uh, And, you know, Gretchen Whitmer then outran Biden by a lot. But she beat Tudor Dixon in 2022 by 10 points. Mm -hmm. Um, And so... To have Biden down eight, eight in Michigan, uh, pretty concerning, especially because, um, and I don't know, even know how much you and I have talked about this, but to the extent that I have a theory of the case on 2024, it's like an old school blue wall theory. Like I am very nervous about the slide with black voters and with, and with Hispanic voters, which both do real damage in Georgia and Nevada. I think Dems feel more comfortable about Nevada than I do. Um, they shouldn't. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, Cortez Masto won by the skin of her teeth, yeah. and uh, and they elected uh, a Republican governor in that same election. There now there were split ticket voters, but man, the Reed machine has just been like disintegrating there, and it has a lot of these sort of Hispanic voters that tend to be more Trumpy. Um, so, and then in Georgia, you know, black voters matter so much in Georgia. And if you're losing even, you know, 10% of black voters to Trump, like that is just brutal in a place like, yeah, it's brutal in a place like Georgia. So I've been very focused on Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and then Arizona. Um, and you may think, well, Arizona has a lot of Hispanics, too. Arizona, though, also the reason it's been kind of bluing up and it's been its trajectory has been increasingly uh, blue has a lot to do with how many people are moving into Maricopa County. And it's like young, sort of college educated suburban families. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that at, that has been, I think, one of the political shifts that's been going on in Arizona. Also, people move in there from California. Um, so. It is Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin that I tend to think about a lot. And those three states all have something in common, which is that they got a ton of white people. Mm. Ton. Just, they're just like crawling with white people. So uh, and this is where, um, and especially in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, and, you know, not, there's just, there's a, the, there's a lot of these suburban areas in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania seems to be the best for Biden because Bucks County uh, the areas around Harrisburg, the areas around Pittsburgh, like young people are still moving there. Yeah. And so like the reason it's so different, I think, from Ohio is that Ohio has been bleeding young voters and Pennsylvania has been attracting them. But I just it's the Michigan is this puzzle. And I think, you know, sorry, and just I'll say about Wisconsin, Wisconsin's like a pretty interesting place where you've got a Senate race with Tammy Baldwin, who's been relative, like they're like, think about Wisconsin politics. They got Ron John, who's one of the most like Moscow friendly MAGA weirdos out there, um, who I think could have been beaten if they hadn't run Mandela Barnes. Um, And then you got Tammy Baldwin, the lesbian sort of moderate champion of the working class uh, lady. And she's, she's pretty popular there. Um, and then they have, like, by the skin of their teeth, elected a Democratic uh, governor in 2022. So these places are tight. They're tight but doable for the Democrats. But just to see Michigan have this wild swing uh, has me 
uh, sort of perplexed, and I've been trying to get my arms around it, and the only thing that I can think about, and so this is going to be an upcoming episode of the Focus Group podcast, is we did two groups yesterday of TikTok young people. So young mm. people, young progressives who are who love TikTok, and then young conservatives who love TikTok. And the amount uh, that the young progressives talked about Gaza as a reason why they felt like they could not vote for Biden. And this was the thing in the Michigan polling, sort of <clears throat> as David, the pol- CNN pollster, was talking about, uh, is Trump is just doing better with young people right now because young people are sitting out on Biden uh, over Israel and Gaza. And <laughs> and also they are very are worried sure about, about their that? TikTok. He said that Biden had totally caved to the progressive left on Israel and Gaza. And so I thought oh, they'd all should... be very happy. No? You are you sure that, that you've got Steve that right? Case conversation? No, uh, I cannot talk about that in public. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in there, right? Right. Just, you know, my one thing. No, they nothing, are. But you could talk about that conversation. They're very mad at Joe Biden. Look, I, I'm not even going to get into the whole thing with Hayes too deeply. I'm only going to say this: is that like the whole debate with folks like Steve or folks like these progressives who don't want to vote for Biden. Like, I just stand here being like, if you think, and Tim was doing a good job of pressing him on this. Like you and he did sort of twist yourself into a pretzel to make the case. That somehow it is intellectually dishonest and it 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 uh, it perverts the discourse and the intellectual rigor to simply say that one of these guys is better than the other, and this is preposterous, right? So f- I say to the anti-antis who refuse to who say that Donald Trump is a singular threat, a singular threat to the country, and I say the same thing to young progressives who think Donald Trump is a singular threat to the country and who, by the way, will be much worse on the issues that you purport to care about. I say to all of you that there's only one person who stands between the thing you think is this great big threat and that person not being president, right? There's only one thing, and that's the vote for Joe Biden. And yet everybody's got these uh, big, long, Twisting reasons why that they just can't do that or that's so complicated for them. It's not that complicated. Well, so I, I want to defend the young progressives here. Well, I think they're dead wrong on this. Do you know, I haven't felt this Republican in ages. Okay. Been listening to the young TikTok progressives. I, if you believe that Donald Trump is not an outlier... And that he is the straight line consequence of, uh, you know, he is the same as Mitt Romney, the same as Marco Rubio, the same as George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. If you believe that, then they don't really see Trump as a singular threat. They just see him as another bad Republican. Oh, no, well, I actually, think that no, is let me... fucking insane. Oh, I know. I can do better than this. That's not what they think. Oh, OK. It's not that they think Donald Trump is just like every other Republican. It's that they think Joe Biden and Donald Trump are the same. Yeah. Well, those people deserve what they get. Well, that's what the young progressives think. They think that uh, there's not much Uniparty. difference between Trump and Biden. Yeah. Well, I mean, sure. So why bother voting? It's just voting? obvious. I, you know what? This is, again. If, You're if, cranky. I had to listen to two groups of Gen Zers <sighs> last night explain the world through the frame of TikTok. And I want to... What did I say the other day? I want to throw my computer through the window and follow it out. Oof. If these these mouth breathing morons who have equal dignity because they're inherently per people, blah 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 blah. If these mouth breathing morons uh, think that a TikTok is great and b oh they love that, TikTok that they're gonna that, that they're gonna overturn <laughs> they're going to play russian roulette with liberal democracy in order to keep their chinese propaganda tool then what are we even trying to save this country for uh why bother uh, uh, well i why don't agree bother? with that and it's you just know a question whether the that. rocket sled gets to hell tomorrow or in in five years because these people are the future and they're idiots uh but again here's the thing they are also, their brains are being hijacked by Chinese spyware. And you know what's 
what's amazing is how much, okay, so the conservative, the young conservatives and the young progressives, they didn't sound the same, but they kind of sounded the same on TikTok, which is like, <laughs> it was basically like, how else will I get my misinformation? Uh, it was like, I, I, I need it to find You'll out. You'll still get it. No, I need to find It'll just out be owned why by the gov- Oracle or something. No, it, and <laughs> it's it's about distrust of our government. Like they they oh believe, right? How else will I get my information? The real information about the vaccines, uh, say the young conservatives. Burn it all down, and Sarah. How will they get the real information? Let's burn it all down. Know. You know what? The Fuck kids it. were I'm not all right, Trump man. <laughs> I'm voting for Trump <laughs> so, now. Okay, all right. You this s- is oh. all right. Uh, and and the progressives, um, how will they get the real information on Gaza that our government is suppressing if they can't how get will it through they get TikTok? It? Because you know what? If they don't get that information, that will impact their lives so much. And the New York Times can't report anything. You can't pick up a newspaper. They you can't do not walk pick down up a to newspaper. one of those steel no boxes and put a quarter in and get a get a a piece of dead tree out that weighs fourteen <sighs> ounces. No, you couldn't do that. JBL. We are old now, and I will tell you, uh, I was get off my lawn. <laughs> I was talking about this with Casey. Like, so we're she's a little younger than I am, and I'm a little younger than you are. But like, we're sort of nativeish enough to the internet that you know we went through sort of Facebook and Twitter and the iteration of uh, social media. Now I stopped. Uh, I've gotten on nothing new since basically Twitter. Like I'm not on Instagram, whatever. And whenever people there's kerfuffles about these things i i use facebook so rarely that i um i don't care but i cared a great deal about twitter right when elon musk bought it because it was a platform that i liked and used and had sort of invested time in uh but one of the things that just like i can't understand tiktok like when i look at tiktok uh like somebody else is showing me something you see it 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 moves too quickly for me, right? It's like I, I, I like I guess Tim can handle it, but it's just uh, and then I watch my kids. Put your like, glasses like, on, old lady. I know, I know, right? Um, <laughs> it's like everything's blurry to me when I don't wear them. Can I side note? Getting glasses. I don't know if you know this, but they really help you see better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had had those glasses on order. They've been like sitting at the eyeglass place for like. Eight months and I just haven't been getting them. I put them on and it was like one of those videos where they give a baby glasses for the first time. And they're like, (laughs) I can see. Look at my mommy. There's the world. Um, Like, okay. Anyway, anyway, just the, the TikTok thing. I don't, my point is, is I don't think we understand. I know we don't understand the attachment that young people have to it. I don't think we understand how it's influencing them. But listening to these kids, uh, young people, yesterday, I, and they're not kids, actually. They, they, they voted for Joe Biden, the progressive group, before. And they were very, most of them were like, I don't, I don't think I can do it this time. Uh, and I, anyway. You know what? Don't. Don't. Okay, stop. I don't, don't tell them that. We got to get them all. <laughs> this, is, this is my double haters theory, right? There's like, the, they're the same. I hate them both, whatever. You're, I do think you have to go get those people back. Um, and... You know, and I think that can be done, but it is, uh, it's that's that that is to me that was those two things coming at me at the same time did come together in my head as a okay, man, real problem for Biden, real problem. Hey, Sarah, there's there's more show. Oh, there is. Yeah, are we still talking? We have more. Yeah, we're still we're still talking. The the talking goes on, but that's only for the you know the the people who are inside the velvet rope, the the Bulwark Plus members. Oh, they got to subscribe. Yeah, tell them to subscribe. Tell the you people, You should subscribe. Sarah. Guys, why wouldn't you subscribe? You get all kinds of things. You get some some extra uh, me and JVL. You get some extra me and George Conway. Do you get? Oh, you get JVL's triad. It's one of the best things the Bulwark offers. I read it at least once or twice a week. <laughs> yes. Go and subscribe. We'd love to have you. <laughs>